Hey everyone, now that the Desert Green Pearl Barnfine TT's engine has been removed, it's time to go back to the replacement engine and take off that clutch kit so that I'm able to mount it up onto an engine stand to get it ready for its next bit of work. Then I'll go back to the original engine where I'll need to strip off some of the parts. So first off is removing the bevel box, then I'll remove the gearbox, give that a bit of a clean as well. Then I'll look at removing the clutch kit off the original engine. You'll see that I'm nicely surprised in the video. And after that, of course, is removing the Franken turbo from the original motor. I wanted to get the replacement engine up on the stand first, so the old clutch kit had to be removed. I got a little surprised when I got to the flywheel though, so just check this out. I always remove the bolts in a star pattern and in stages to back the bolts out evenly. This ensures the pressure plate doesn't jam on its way out. Looking really closely, I found that the flywheel was actually welded up. Someone must have really wanted a single mass flywheel but cheated on the job. Now I'm just removing the flywheel bolts. Again, I like to work in a star pattern. Once that's off, I'm definitely able to see the crank needs some attention with a wire brush. Okay, so mounting up. These are M12 by thread pitch 1.75 bolts. Now I'm really sorry about the lighting, but I just really wanted to crack on. The bolts are readily available at any hardware shop, and again, just for reference, they are M12 by 1.75, and anything around 110 mil in length is what you want. I got four of them with eight washers and a nut for the bolt that goes in on the bottom right of the gearbox. This one needs a nut as it's not a threaded hole, hence it's needed for the bolt to stay in place. So I've bolted the stand attachment on and shifted it around so that it's central to the assembly and central as possible. At this point it's still very top heavy so it'll want to be upside down. Then it's just a matter of working with the crane to get it at the correct height so it slips into the stand. Okay, so coming back to the original engine now as I need to get some parts from it. First is removing the bevel box. I find it easier to remove the bevel box before removing the gearbox as working near the floor makes it easier to take the gearbox off. You will see this later. I've found that I have the weirdest little bevel box bracket here. They're usually a black bracket which slips out easily with the bevel box in place. So I wasn't expecting this one to be non-removable with off? the bevel box still in situ. The easiest way to remove the hidden bolt is with a rattle gun. There's no need to try and keep the gears from spinning. And after this is the fun part, which is removing the four bolts that hold the bevel box onto the gearbox. Now you can see them here, but I'll flip the frame around so you can see where they are much easier. The one marked in red required a little bit of creativity to get it out. It's all definitely doable though, and much easier with the engine out. That 
is dumb. As you're doing this, make sure to have a tray or three around to catch the gearbox oil. I'll be using the blue red line oil on reassembly. Once all of the bolts are off the bevel box, also known as the transfer case, it can then be removed. Just draining the rest of that gearbox oil out so that when I move it around it doesn't make a mess. This is the final bolt to remove on this side. This is going to slide under there. And my plan is to drop this onto the trolley. And then undo the bolts, last ones. That one's really tall, so I've got to remove the starter bolt, starter bolt. Once all of the starter and gearbox bolts have been removed, I'm able to start shifting the gearbox away from the block. A bit of sideways shaking action always helps. The gearbox always tends to be oil stained and gross, so cleaning it up while it's out helps to get into all the not so easy places to clean while it's in the engine bay. Time to focus my attention to the original engine's clutch. Take a look and let me know what you think. It's definitely not a stock yes. clutch. So that was a really nice surprise. That actually looks really, really good. Okay. Side. That's definitely very usable. Love it. And then gotta get these out save this flywheel. I'm not sure what's going on there. I think it's just because it's been sat around. But definitely going to use this kit again. The final original part to remove from the engine is the Franken Turbo. 
I'm keeping as many fittings attached to the turbo untouched, which just means it's less things to replace. I'm so glad this isn't using the OEM e torx bolts as they're such a massive nightmare. So that's everything for this video. I'm really happy with the progress so far. All those bits have come off. There's heaps that I've already done. Now the next kind of step is to make sure I get all the good bits of the original engine. There's still quite a lot more of goodies on there to remove. So in the next step, what I'll do is give the replacement block a bit of a clean and strip it down of all of the cables that don't need to be on there, all of the hardware that doesn't need to be on there anymore so that it can get ready to be opened up and get the rods upgraded. Hope that's helped you see a little bit more of how you can take apart your Audi TT 1.8T engine. Like and subscribe to keep up with the Desert Green Pearl Roadster's latest updates. Until next time, 